Hey everybody, it's Wednesday, it's 12 o'clock, it's time for busy webinar. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. It is three days towards the major holiday season. We are excited to have uh, this be our last busy webinar of our last uh, of the year, right Jenna? That's true. Yeah, I I believe we do still have another one next week, but Tracy well, and I will not be there. <laughs> that's 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 Dave. So we don't, no we one don't cares we, about yeah, that. we don't worry about we don't worry about him. So my name is Trigvi. I'm the director of Buzz Development here at BusyWeb. If you are interested in talking with me or getting the PowerPoint after the fact, I'd be more than happy to share this with you. We are going to go somewhat fast today. So Jenna's responsibility here today is if you use the hashtag BusyWebinar on Twitter, she will stop me from talking and interrupt me and say something uh, smarmy at the same time because that's her want. She's, yep. she's funnier than I am. Uh, and uh, we'll ask the question. So for those of you who are watching this live right now, uh, we want this to be as interactive an experience as possible for you. So uh, who are we? Uh, quick plug for us before we really get started. We are a full service digital marketing agency. We're based in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul. We've got a team of about 18 people now. And uh, we take clients from having a having nothing to creating logos, creating a website, getting more people to look at the website, and get, getting more people to take action and buying tendencies. It's a full service operation here. Everybody that works here is uh, fully based on uh, everything they do and they're experts in what they, the, they do. So uh, if you're interested, please feel free and give us a call. So uh, before we really get into this, uh, I did have a question that I wanted to ask you, Jenna. Yes. Do you know what today is? Uh, oh, is it the winter solstice or is that? It is the winter solstice. Yesterday? What do you know what else it is? No, busy webinar day. It's busy webinar day, which is great. But uh, and this is true, is uh, and you're not going to believe this, but you can Google it and check. Today is an international short girl awareness and appreciation <laughs> day. Yes. So um, I don't really need you in the room, but because uh, all the other busy webinar people, busy web people are currently rating your uh, Facebook account for pics to show our appreciation and our love for you, I thought I'd share some here. Oh boy! Here's here's Jenna as Frida Kahlo at Halloween. This is not how she normally looks. Well, that's how I look before I pluck my eyebrows. Okay. Uh, boy, I'm sure glad you, you you look different when you come into the office. But you that's a great, great picture of you. Here's a nice picture of you by the lake. Oh, look at that hat. Uh, Is, isn't, she, isn't she worthy of appreciation? And, and then uh, here's here's a picture your dad posted a couple of years ago. Isn't, isn't that great? So sweet. Well, you're the shortest girl we know, and certainly uh, you're the, the shortest by height, but number one in our hearts. So thank you for all that you do here at Busy Web. Aw, thank you, Tricky. It's so sweet. Yeah, I'm and a yeah, and Jen's pulling funny photos and posting them currently on the Busy Web Facebook page. So for those of you who are watching this live afterwards, please check us out on, on Facebook uh, and busy at uh, facebook.com slash busy web. You'll see, see a lot better, more funny pictures of Jenna. Oh so boy. <laughs> uh, before this is uh, uh, the context of what we're going to be talking about today is digital marketing trends. And one of the, one of the easiest ways that we ha use here at, at BusyWeb and offer to our clients is uh, constant contact as a as a, a marketing backbone. So we're, I'm going to be saying constant contact more than once today. Really, you can get this kind of thing from anywhere, but uh, as shorthand, I generally say constant contact. We like it a lot. It's a great uh, tool, and it's not a lot of money. It's generally between fifty and seventy-five dollars a month to do. So, if you uh, are interested in checking it out, we'll give you a, a little coupon code at the end. But 
uh, let's get started. So, uh, really, uh, one as we're reviewing back on 2016 and really looking forward to 2017, one of the things that is really clear is, is that digital marketing isn't going away, and it is now as more important than ever. And choosing wisely on how you are going to be doing your digital marketing effort for your small business is even more crucial. The, what I have on screen here is just some of the many ways in which you can now engage with your customers and your customers can engage with you before they even have a face-to-face -face meeting. So having a digital footprint that makes sense and looks fantastic is now more crucial than ever. Great digital marketing creates a similar experience, just like if you go to every single McDonald's, you're going to have a similar experience by ordering the same fries. You want to create that across all of your digital platforms. So here's a company, that here's a nonprofit that we like that uh, you can see as we're looking at their website, we're looking at their, uh, their uh, email marketing, even through Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, they're using the same logo, they're using the same color scheme, they're really really hitting all the points that they need to make sure that you have a similar experience no matter how and how, how you're bringing this to action. So that's really one of the most important things that as we're looking back on 2016 and, and moving forward to 2017 that we want to look towards is how can, we, how can we best present your small business in a way that is the same experience everywhere. Here are the five things that I want to talk about today that sort of are variations on that theme of a similar experience. I want to talk about digital marketing and why if it, you're not there, it's absolutely crucial that you are there. Second, I want to talk about content marketing. That's really become crucial in the last 12 months. I want to talk about targeting and segmentation and how that leads to personalization. And uh, next, we'll uh, dive a little bit into mobile and then, uh, of course, wrap up with big data because nothing ends a presentation better than statistics. So uh, first thing we're going to talk about is digital marketing. And a lot of people that I run into and we run into on a regular basis say, well, I don't need that. Well, you do. And the reason why is because it makes good business sense. If you look at the direct median ROIs by, by uh, marketing your business, four out of the seven, six are actually digital. So calling somebody on the phone, emailing them something, that does get you a certain amount of response. But everything else, the return on your investment, makes good business sense to be digital. So it, it's as crucial as ever. <clears throat> and here's the fun part, is no matter what, the customers that you want to engage with and that you're trying to talk to, they get to choose how they interact with you. You don't get to choose how to interact with your customers anymore. They are going to choose and they're going to make decisions on off hours as they're walking or as they're riding on public transportation or sitting in a car waiting for somebody to come out of a store. They are going to choose when they want to interact with you. So having that same consistent presence as if they met you in person is absolutely crucial. So this begs the question though, what exactly are all these people doing on all those devices when you see people walking around town with their heads in their phone? What are they doing? Well, they're consuming things. We are uh, consumers at our basis level. So they're looking at social media platforms, they're watching videos, they're reading blogs. They're also making those things. They're sharing their shared experiences with people using mobile and tablets and they're even consuming more video. And they're trying out new social channels all the time. Uh, the, one of the interesting things that I have on this list is is uh, Vine because Vine was a really cool uh, social media platform that doesn't even exist anymore. So there's always const constant of evolution of the social platform and the digital platform. You do have to absolutely stay abreast of it. So, but what you don't have to do is choose all of them. What you can choose is the ones that make the most sense for you. There are a couple that are absolutely crucial that we'll talk about later that are the same for every single business. But at the end of the day, the ones that make sense for you are the ones that you need to be spending the time on. If a social channel doesn't meet your target demographic, you shouldn't be there. If it's not giving you a return on investment after six to 12 months, it's time to turn it off. So how do you know which one to use? How do you know which one makes the most sense for you? Well, the easiest answer is number one, how much time can you devote to a social network? 
By and large, uh, if you're on Facebook, you should be posting about once a day or three to five times a week. To get any sort of traction on Twitter or Pinterest, you need, I'm sorry, Instagram, you need to be uh, posting at least three to five times a day. So if you don't have that uh, opportunity to post odd at three to five times a day, it's probably not a good choice for you. Next, what personnel, what skills do you have to work with? Another way to say this is how interesting is your business? Your business is interesting to you and you can certainly help people, but can you take a picture of somebody filling out their tax return? Is that interesting and that is that marketable? And the answer is no. So does that mean that your business is bad? Absolutely not. What it means is you need to find a new and interesting way to market your business and not have it use a pictorial medium like Instagram. Next, can you do this yourself? Is it hard, is it difficult, or do you have to train somebody, or do you have to uh, purchase a service? And then finally, where most and most importantly, where does your audience hang out? Where are they? What do they do? What are they interested in? If you don't know how to do that, if you don't know how to find that the answer to that question, you should just simply ask them. So how do we jump on this digital trend? Number one, where's your audience? This is the most crucial part of this part of the presentation is where are they? If you don't know where they are, the easiest thing to do is to ask them. Ask the customers that you're dealing with on a regular basis. Ask them where they are, what social channels they're using, and what they choose to interact with you. Next, it's a good time to reevaluate where are you today? Are you where the audience is, or are you trying to do too much, and are you spread too thin? If you are, it's time to back down, and if you're not where your, your audience is, it's time to move to a new platform. So how, what's next? Uh, best thing I can suggest, choose the next channel, but uh, make sure that you are cognizant of the fact that you do have to continuously feed it. Much like a puppy, it requires constant care and attention, and if you are uh, somebody who doesn't have a whole lot of time, uh, it's probably best to get a cat. So that's uh, our first. Let us let me stop and say, hey, Jenna, do we have anybody on uh, social media who's using the hashtag BusyWebinar? Not just yet. Super. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of what we're here for today, which is really the substantive change and the thing that we need to work on in 2017. It's also, surprisingly, what uh, Jenna is best at, which is uh, writing and content marketing. So when we talk about content marketing, what what, do we, what does that mean, and what does that uh, what does that really mean for us? So I have a definition on screen here, and I'll read it. It says content marketing is a strategic marketing approach focused on creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent contact to content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience, and ultimately to drive profitable customer action. Isn't that funny? I have it right in front of my face and I still can't read it correctly. I have a couple of words that I highlighted because I think they're incredibly important to what we're talking about here uh, when, we're, when we're evaluating content marketing. It's valuable, it has to be relevant, and it has to be consistent, and it has to drive profit, profitable customer action. Just educating somebody on a topic that is of particular interest to you will not necessarily make you money. We need to focus on what do we do and how do we do it that drives action and money for us. So why do we want to focus on content marketing? Well, it's because almost half, of, more than half of all people make uh, purchasing decisions before they even talk to a supplier in this day and age. And by 2020, 80, it's estimated that 85% of customers will manage their relationship with an enterprise, meaning a, uh, uh, a business, without actually interacting with a human. That's, those are two shocking statistics that really underline the uh, importance of uh, a consistent and championship level digital footprint. How do we do it? Well, uh, the best way I can describe this is it's very much like dancing. So we'll do this based on the cha-cha. So one, two, cha-cha-cha. So the first thing we want to do is look at our audience. The next, agony. What are their pain points? Then how do we attract them? How do we get them to say, yes, I want to dance with you? How do we make sure that we're good, going to be good dance partners together? And then let's dance. So let's break this down one by one. Let's talk about the audience first. So the questions you want to ask are, who exactly is your audience? 
Are they men? Are they women? Does it matter? Are they older? Are they younger? Are they affluent? Are there, does it matter? What sort of educational status are they? Um, the reason you want to understand that is because you can start making decisions and you can start creating strategy once you understand who those people are. Um, I, I have very different likes and tastes than Jenna does. And so if you're going to try and, uh, and market to me, you're going to do so very differently than you are to Jenna. All you so, have to do is put a cat on it tomorrow right. to Jenna. Well, or, hey, that's not even true because I'm a sucker for a cute cat video. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. So here's the question I would, I, I, would, I would want you to think about. So how are you, would you explain quantum physics to somebody? Well, if you would most likely have one particular answer, and it would be a sort of a standard answer. But what if, we, uh, what if you're describing quantum physics to your mother? Is the language going to change? Is the way you present the idea going to change? Probably yes. Similarly, if you're going to um, explain it to some friends, you're going to use absolutely different language whatsoever. Finally, if you're going to explain it to a little kid, that's a third bucket of language that you're going to be using to present the one similar idea. The idea is the same, but the method of presentation and the repositioning of the idea is wildly different depending upon the audience. So it's a good thing to keep in mind is as you're trying to look at your quantum physics, how are you best going to describe it and which one of these circles do you, does your audience fit into? Let's talk about agony. This, is, uh, this isn't as bad as you think, but it, what really we, we want to be looking at is, are these kind of questions. Where is our audience in pain? That's not actual literal physical pain or even metaphysical pain, but really what, what we want to know is what are they missing in their lives that they might not even know about? What can we provide them to make their lives better or save them money in such a way that would attract them to take the next part? In, in this process. So once we understand really realistically what the, our pain points are for our potential audience, we know how to do the third part, which is to, uh, which is to attract them. But don't forget about uh, what makes people people. If uh, you want to talk about how uh, somebody is going to buy from you or else they're going to, uh, their, their, their puppy is going to get shaved, well, that's a little mean, and it's probably not even true. So it's it's uh, good to remember that uh, the most effective thing that you have to market yourself with is your own person and who you are and the relationships that you build. Also, before we leave the agony topic, we want to know what is the most agony that our customers are facing because once we know that we can learn how to gain their attention and we can learn how to go from uh, being a snake oil salesman to being a trusted resource which is absolutely critical in the stage process stage three attraction that's when we uh, get their attention we've identified what their pain point is and we've pointing them towards the next step which is let's start engaging together so the first best way to do that is by understanding where your audience is and what their unique POV, which is a fancy marketing way of saying point of view. What, what do we need to do to present ourselves in such a way that uh, people will actually take notice and realize that we might be a solution to their problem? Next is agreement and uh, the dancing. Uh, we are they are our customers are looking at us and they are providing they understand that we are providing a great educational value we can make their lives better we can make them make their lives smarter by talking to us this is an, also a great opportunity to start identifying and sharing your business culture how you do business and how you work with people to make their lives even better this is also a good opportunity to weed out those who aren't the right fit uh, I, above anybody else, would have always have trouble with the idea of saying no to money uh, and trying to figure out a good solution to the problem. But at the end of the day, if those people that you're dealing with just aren't going to dance in a musical way for you, it's probably not going to work out as well for them too. So weed out those who aren't a good fit and understand what makes a good fit customer and what doesn't make a good fit customer. By doing that, you're really going to be able to understand how you, uh, how, what kind of a dancer you are as well. The end goal here is to convert more 
the people who are uh, dancing with you the longest. You're doing so by uh, making sure that they're continu continuously interested in you. They continually promote you so you can do more business together. Now, here's the really hard part. The last part is the dancing, so the actual action. So the prospect is uh, interested in you, and they're uh, wanting you to take a particular action. Now you actually have to take the action. So make sure that you can uh, deliver on what you promised. Because at the end of the day, what you will have is a better educated prospect, and you will, uh, you will have uh, – people who are now going to almost instantly be looking for buyer's remorse. So the remainder, remaining info that they didn't necessarily think about, frequent objections, frequently asked questions, make sure that you can head those off in the pass and answer those as easily and quickly as possible. And remember, how almost half of your potential customer base is going to look at you online before you do that. So providing great content on your website or through email marketing is really going to make that happen. At the end of the day, one of the most important lessons that I've learned in my years is that uh, if they don't buy, that doesn't mean that you should burn them with a shovel, then bury the shovel. Boy, that was a mixed metaphor. Let me try that again. That was uh, pretty violent. Pretty it, it, you shouldn't bury them with a shovel, then bury the shovel, even if they might have made the wrong decision. What you should do is keep in touch. Make sure that you let them know that you're still out there and let them know that you're not going to hold any grudges for, uh, for them choosing the wrong way. Once in a blue moon, what will happen is a customer will come back to you very quickly and say, I made a mistake. I'm ready to come back. Let's start dancing together. So how do we jump on this trend? Well, uh, we want to define our audience so we know who we're talking to. We want to know what is their pain points. Then we want to uh, get their attention with valuable and interesting content. We want to provide good value. We want to share our culture. And we want to weed out those who aren't a good fit. And then finally, we want to make sure that we validate the decision to dance by providing uh, any remaining information that the prospect might need. So the third trend that we're going to look at today is targeting and segmentation, which are fancy words, but still, don't worry. It's uh, all going to make sense once I'm done. So here's a, a list of your customers. And again, think about that uh, Think about that physics question that I asked you earlier. You're going to use a lot of different information to uh, talk to a lot of different kinds of people. But we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're not completely and utterly overwhelmed in doing so. So what we want to do is take our customer base and actually say, okay, here's our customers. Now let's split them up a little. Let's put them into buckets. Let's do the regular customers, the people who buy from us seasonally, our most important people, and then our new customers. Those are four pretty clear and distinct buckets in which we would change how we present information and present that idea. But now, all of a sudden, instead of dealing, dealing with nine different people, we're only dealing with four groups of people. So we're making our lives easier by segmenting those people into interests and demographics. So at the end of the day, we get a, a ton of marketing messages. How many marketing messages do you think we get in, in any particular day? Jenna, do you want to hazard a guess? Oh my God. Uh, I'm going to say in the low hundreds. Low hundreds, pretty close. We receive al almost 265 a day, every single day. And for the most part, uh, a lot of us don't even recognize that it's a marketing impression and uh, something that is, uh, we're a company is trying to get us to notice. And the reason is by having somebody shout at us 264 times in a day, all we really hear is noise. And so we've blocked it out. What our job as small business marketers is to do is to try and change the conversation. And instead of being part of the noise, we want to make sure that we are as effective as possible. So the way that we do that is by targeting who we're talking to by personalizing what we're, what we're saying and making them feel more comfortable dealing with us. Here's the punchline and how this turns out. 40% of those customers are going to buy more from people who personalize that shopping experience. Similarly, uh, almost 60% of customers are likely to shop with people who have a really good personalized experience. And even more significantly, 75% uh, of customers are going to share personal information with a brand, namely you, 
if they think it's going to improve their customer experience and exp improve their interaction with you. So those are three great opportunities to really dive into somebody's life and make them feel welcome in their store, and you can do that digitally. How do you do that? You ask them things like their name, their address, any other interests they have, how many times they buy, do they go to any uh, uh, special events, what sort of devices they use, and how do they best like to be communicated to? Those are pretty benign questions. It's not like uh, any of those are, are your social security number, but it gives you the opportunity to really start segmenting into a great uh, group of buckets. And then what you get to do is to use that information positively. So when you send out an email, you're sending it out to different groups of people. When you're creating a social media promotion, you're creating that promotion for different people. The discount offers are going to go to the people who are most likely going to buy, which is going to increase your revenue and increase your opportunities for success. You can even do customer events and VIPs. You can even do uh, a creative reward, reward and loyalty program. I almost said rewardity. <laughs> and then, uh, but at the end of it, really what your customers are always going to feel is that you are there only to serve them. And you are there to provide them with a great customer service experience. So what's the easiest way to jump on this trend of targeting and segmentation? So first, uh, review your contacts list. If you don't have a contacts list, you should probably get one and start one. And then try and figure out how you can segment into better groups. And if you don't have the good enough information to segment that in a way it makes sense, start asking those people for more information. Once you have that and you've segmented into a, a workable amount of groups, then find places that you can automate your marketing around those segments. What you do that is by develop, developing special offers, special events, different segments. All of that goes into a really creating a customized user experience, but you're doing it in mass for everybody within those buckets. So it's a great opportunity to pick up a tremendous amount of wind speed by using uh, marketing automated tools. Okay, this is our fourth of five trends for 2017. This is a big one. This is one that a lot of people miss. So let's dive into mobile. I have some statistics on, on screen here that uh, are, are a little bit shocking. If you look at uh, the amount of times that people look at their cell phone, it's over 150 a day. 70% of Americans own a smartphone, and even half of those people are reading emails on their phones on a regular basis. So there's a great opportunity to really uh, permeate of that little four-inch screen and that four-inch supercomputer that we all carry in our pocket every day and market to. A couple of things before we really get into this. It's important to realize that mobile has truly changed the face of business and changed our behavior. Uh, it's the majority of how people read messages and posts now, and the statistics support the idea that how you are found is most likely on a mobile device, and purchasing decisions are made on a mobile device before they even pick up the phone and call you. So here's an example. Here's a store that uh, is a Google uh, post list get, that has a Google local viewing. 80% um, uh, of, of uh, people who are going to be looking for somebody uh, to do business with are going to be using a smartphone to find local information. Of that 80% uh, people that uh, are going to be buying, it's going to be done more than two times the rate of a non-local search. And 50% of store visits will happen within an hour of that local search. So it get ba gets back to the original idea of digital marketing being absolutely crucial because if they can't find you or if it doesn't make sense, then they're just going to be gone. And if you do do it well, then chances are good you're going to increase your sales rate by about 80%. I'll say that again, about 80%. When you're doing digital marketing, it has to work and it has to look great on a mobile device. That's true for a website just as well as email. Email is really indicative of the problem, which is why I provided some statistics here. 75% of the time, if an email doesn't look good on a mobile device, they'll just delete it. You're gone. Done. What's worse is that 30% of the time, if it doesn't look good on a mobile device, people will unsubscribe and thus terminate the relationship with you 
if it doesn't look good on a mobile device. So how does that look? How does it have to be working on a mobile device? How does it have to look? Here's some mistakes to avoid. Number one, too much text. Remember, you've got only about a four-inch screen at best. So the more words in there, the less likely I'm going to read it. Because if I've got my head down and my phone, I might walk into a tree. Multiple columns is a problem that a lot of people face. Uh, the easiest way to get around this is just by making sure that any email marketing you do has only one column and that the image size is, for, is optimized for mobile. Here's a picture of a yoga studio, but uh, you wouldn't necessarily know that because there's only three women bending down. Next, we want to make sure we can avoid tiny fonts. This is especially true for me as I've passed the age of 40, is that if I have to squint, then I'm going to feel like that's a personal affront to my being, and I'm going to stop uh, reading whatever email and move on to something else. Lastly, if people don't understand what you want them to do and you don't understand how they don't understand how to find you or what you're asking of them, then they're just going to delete the email. Or what's worse is they won't do anything with the email and then they'll delete the email six months down the road when they forgot why they saved the email in the first place. Mobile can work for your business, and mobile really can uh, create new revenue for you. 70% of the people that you're going to be dealing with statistically want mobile coupons, things that they can walk into the store and say, here I have a coupon, uh, either on a trackable coupon like a Groupon or a Facebook promotion as well. And you can encourage engagement uh, through social media, doing things like check-ins, doing things like opting in uh, using QR codes. You can, uh, and I talked, to, you can ask your customers for new content creation or even write, have them write reviews about their experience with you. Hopefully it's a positive one. If not, that's a whole other kettle of fish altogether. Advertising is uh, really taking off in the last 12 to 16 months as well. And uh, I have some examples on the screen here. These are all pay, what are known as pay-per-click advertising opportunities. That's where you pay to be on a particular person's phone at a given time and present them with basically an advertisement to go to your website, which then also begs the question that if, it, if your website isn't mobile responsive, probably shouldn't do this either. And if your website isn't mobile responsive, it needs to be so as soon as humanly possible. How do we jump on this trend? Well, we want to, first thing you want to do is check what is your mobile experience? Send your latest email to yourself, look at your website. Uh, if it doesn't look good, it's time for a change. Next, uh, send people uh, a coupon, a deal, something like that and that is targeted to mobile users and uh, see what kind of results that you can get. If you're consulting or if you are, if you are a consultant, then the next thing you can do is can you create a service around uh, a mobile and making it look as good as, as, good as possible. All right, so we're on to our fifth of five trends for 2017. This is uh, this is the hard one. It's kind of I should have probably should probably started with this, but it's going to be going to be good. So this is we're going to talk about big data. So the the trouble with data is it it gives you the opportunity to make decisions, but it, they're tricky decisions to be made. So the cartoon I have on screen here shows uh, sales and shaved heads. That doesn't mean that if you everybody shave your head that you're going to make more sales. It just means that there are two lines that you have to figure out. So data isn't important for data's sake. Really what data can give you is the opportunity to ask good questions and make good decisions. And I'm going to go into that, go into a little of that. Data is everywhere. Everything that you participate in or see on a daily basis can be monetized and measured. Things like point of sales, things like demographics, things like opens, clicks, views, all of those things are measurable and things that you can get those data access to. However, it's incredibly daunting and mildly frightening. Here are three analytics points for Constant Contact, for Facebook, and for uh, a website. That's a lot to look at. You, you can quickly get overwhelmed with data and quickly get overwhelmed with the opportunity to make a decision but be paralyzed with the idea that you can't make a good one. So 
that begs the question, why is all of this data important and why should this matter to you as a small business? Well, number one, it gives you the opportunity to really understand what a success metric is. How do you know if you're doing well? Well, you do so because you're counting the people who are coming in, you're counting the people going to your website, you're calling the people who make an, make, you're making appointment. All of those activities really gener figure, will generate revenue for you. And the more clicks, the more visits, the more reservations, the more calls you get, all of those, if you increase those numbers, I guarantee you will increase revenue or even increase donations if you're a nonprofit. So the real magic happens and really the good stuff or the punchline, as I like to say, apparently I have catchphrases. I was just told that the punchline is one of my catchphrases. I'm not going to ask you, Jenna, because I know you're going to list off <laughs> you're going to list off four. My I'm biting my lip. I will not say. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So the data itself is neat, but what really is cool is what happens when you use that data make, to make a good decision. So uh, if you've got a high open rate or a low click-through rate on email marketing, for instance, the high open rate tells you that you've identified some good keywords, you're sending it to the right people, but they don't really understand your, the call to action and the thing that you're trying to get them to do. Similarly, if we have a low open rate, well, we need to change the time of day and subject line that we're sending it to, but we can be, feel proud of ourselves that we've really provided really good content to those people who are actually opening it. So just even in this little matrix here, you can see that by looking at the data and analyzing the data, we now know what we need to do to change in order to get better results. So here are a couple of things that I want you to keep in mind. Uh, number one, beware, beware of vanity stats. I almost said that like a vampire. So be, there, be, there. be very, very wary. My son who's two loves the count, and so I, I watch Count Von Count DVDs every single, pretty much every single day. So, uh, van, what's a vanity stat? That's something like an open. Uh, that's something like an open rate. That's really good, and it sort of un, uh, defines the, the scope of your audience, but it doesn't really mean anything in terms of moving the needle. It's much the same as driving by a billboard on the highway. A lot of people do that, but that doesn't mean that they're gonna be taking the, uh, taking the action that you want them to take. So don't forget that what you want is results. When did people do a real thing? When did people really get to where we wanted them to get? Next, start small. Uh, don't get overwhelmed with data. Pick one particular metric and try and move that 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 needle. And third, uh, if something that you're doing is working, well, then do more of that. It sounds like a simple thing to say, uh, but it's important that if you if something is working and you're getting results from it, keep doing that. So how do we jump on this trend? Uh, well, we do it by a couple of different ways. Uh, first, we're going to figure out what are the numbers that really matter for our business and that point to real business results. What are the things that move our collective needle? It's gonna be different for everybody who can hear my voice. It's important you figure out what the, that is to start. Next, look at those numbers over time, not just a snapshot. So determine what cycles, what trends, what baselines exist to uh, really get an understanding of where you need to go to be, be more successful. And finally, uh, based on those numbers and their performance over time, how can you grow? What are the concrete actions that you need to take in order to grow your business? So before we go, I wanted to sort of give you everything in summary. Uh, the most important points, so as we're talking about digital marketing, understand where your customers are. If you don't know where they are, ask. Content marketing, remember it's a dance. Your content is gonna answer questions, it's gonna solve problems, it's gonna deepen relationships before people even pick up the phone. But that, that effort can't be a one size fits all, it needs to be personalized, so segment your audience and segment your message as much as you can. You absolutely have to be mobile, you absolutely have to look good on all mobile, and tracking data will give you great opportunities to make improved decision-making, and great opportunities to get better, really, in, in 2017. So before we go, I uh, just wanted to give you a couple of more resources. If you are um, interested, you can go to busyweb.com slash events. You can check us out and see what other uh, busy webinars that we do. If you're interested in Constant Contact, they've got a great knowledge base. I've got it on screen here. I'd encourage you to take a look at that.
If you are interested in checking out Constant Contact, uh, the best thing I can suggest is if you go to that URL on screen, constantcontact.com slash event dash Meyer, um, you can get Constant Contact for just five bucks a month. I'll say that again, five bucks a month out the door. It's a great deal. I don't know why they're offering it, but they are. So take advantage of it while you can. If you'd like to join our email list, one of the fun constant contact tools that we use is text to join. So if you text busy to 22828, you'll be able to join our list. So thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, this is uh, Jenna and my last uh, webinar of the year. Uh, so everybody have a ho happy holiday, and we'll see you in 2017. And Jenna, do you want to do the honors? Bye. I appreciate you, Jenna. Okay.